स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया This is a short problem session where we will address some problems on the Cauchy-Riemann equations and its implications. Recall that uh, we had defined the Wertinger derivatives in the following manner. So, uh, recall that given omega contained in C, a domain and F a map from omega to C which is differentiable when I say differentiable it means that the total derivative exists uh, the function is uh, real differential total derivative exists then the Wertinger derivatives were defined in the following manner. the z derivative do f by do z at a point z naught is defined to be equal to half of the partial derivative do f by do x at the point z naught plus 1 by i times do f by do y at the point z naught and the and the z and the z bar derivative do f by do z bar at the point z naught is defined as half of do f by do x at the point z naught minus 1 by i times do f by do y at the point z naught. And the, there was an exercise given to you which uh, asked you to establish that the Cauchy Riemann equation is equivalent to demanding that dou f by dou z bar is equal to 0. In this problem session, we begin by uh, looking back at holomorphic polynomials or what polynomials are holomorphic. Uh, let f be a polynomial in z and z bar given by the following formula. Let f be given by f of z is equal to summation c n m there are two subscripts where the n is the exp for the exponent of uh, z and m is the exponent of z bar so n comma m greater than or equal to 0 n plus m is less than or equal to d so this is how we uh, capture a general polynomial notice that every polynomial in x y in r2 can be written in this manner and uh, the problem is to show or first it is to compute what is the Wertinger derivatives of such a polynomial. So, let me write down this statement then prove that dou f by dou z is equal to summation uh, c n m into n into z to the power n minus 1 z bar to the power m where n comma m both are greater than or equal to 0 and n plus m is less than or equal to d. And how is the uh, Wettinger derivative? So, this is at the point z hmm? and how is the derivative dou f by dou z bar defined? So, but z bar at any point z is going to be this is what we have to prove n m greater than or equal to 0 n plus m less than or equal to d c n m z to the power n m z bar to the power m minus 1. Okay, let us try to prove this statement. So, before we go ahead with uh, proving this statement. Uh, let us see that the laws of calculus 
also go through for both these operators dou by dou z both these derivatives wertinger derivatives dou by dou z and dou by dou z bar so in particular the first claim is to check that dou by dou z i will not prove it for uh, dou by dou z bar the proof is going to be very similar by keeping track of the right signs you can give similar proof what is going to be dou by dou z of f plus g by definition this is equal to half dou by dou x of f plus g plus 1 by i times dou by dou x uh, dou i of f plus g but we know that uh, the partial derivatives dou by dou x and dou by dou y they are both linear uh, as uh, operators so basically dou by dou x of f plus g is dou by dou f by dou x plus dou g by dou x so I'll just directly write it as half of this is equal to half of dou of by dou x plus one by i times dou of by dou y plus half of dou g by dou x plus one by i times dou g by dou y, and this is equal to dou of by dou z plus dou g by dou z. So yes, the uh, Linearity is satisfied by the Wertinger derivatives. A similar proof will say that this a similar statement can be made about dou by dou z part. Mm, another uh, uh, imp important uh, pr uh, property which the Wertinger derivatives satisfy is the product rule. So basically, if you have dou by dou z of f times g. This is going to be equal to, let us see what this will be. This is going to be half of dou by dou x of f times g plus 1 by i times dou by dou y of f times g. So, the product rule or the Leibniz rule for the partial derivative operator that is already known and that will give us this is equal to half of, I will just directly write down what it is going to be. This is going to be f times uh, or maybe maybe let me not skip steps. This is going to be f dou z by dou x plus g dou f by dou x plus 1 by i times f dou z by dou y plus g dou f by dou y. And accumulating the correct terms, this is going to be f times half dou g by dou x plus 1 by i times dou g by dou y plus g into half dou f by dou x plus 1 by i times dou f by dou y and that is going to be equal to f times dou f by dou z plus g times dou f, oh, f times dou g by dou z plus g times dou f by dou z. A similar proof can be given for the operator z bar as well. Okay, now let us get to the problem. The problem, let me remind you what the problem was. The problem was to prove that the uh, polynomial in z and z bar given by summation c n m z to the power n z bar to the power n when we compute the uh, Wertinger derivative with respect to z, we get the first expression and this second expression of uh, is for the Wertinger derivative with respect to z bar. So, I will just prove this part. The other part is analogous and I will leave it to you to uh, write it down. Let us just compute the Wertinger derivative of dou f by dou z. Okay, so, f of z, so let f of z be equal to summation c n m z to the power n z bar to the power n. All right, so if we look at uh, the uh, Wertinger derivative dou by dou z of f at the point z, by what we have just established, this is just going to be equal to summation c and m dou by dou z of z to the power n times z bar to the power n. And uh, not writing down the, maybe I should write down once, the indices are going to be the same, 
what what is of interest is what is inside so let's see what happens here this is going to be summation c and m uh, z bar to the power m now by applying the product rule or the leibniz rule this is going to be do z n by do z plus z to the power n do z bar m by do z bar do z so this is precisely what uh, we will be getting by looking at the derivative of z to the power n z bar to the power n so recall that the uh, operator do by do z is the same operator as uh, earlier or uh, the operator d by dz that we were talking about so do z to the power n by do z is equal to n times z to the power n minus 1 let's now look at what is uh, do by do z of z bar to the power m this is what we are uh, interested in the other one we already know uh, to compute this what we will do is we will just compute it for m is equal to 1 for m is equal to 1, this is going to be dou z bar by dou z. And uh, one should actually, I will just leave this as an exercise to you. It is a very straightforward to, uh, straightforward check to see that uh, this is going to be equal to 0. Because you look at uh, the de definition here, this is going to be equal to half of dou z bar by dou x plus 1 by i times dou z bar by dou y and uh, the uh, function uh, dou z bar by dou x is z is basically x plus x minus i y and dou z bar by dou x is going to be equal to 1 and what is going to be x minus i y the de y derivative of x minus i y that's just going to be minus i so this is going to be 1 plus minus plus 1 by i times minus i which is 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0. So this is quite straightforward and now by applying uh, product rule we have dou z bar to the power m by dou z is equal to 0. And therefore if you come back to this expression above this expression of dou f by dou z at the point z this term this term vanishes and hence dou f by dou z is going to be equal to summation n comma m greater than or equal to 0 n plus m less than or equal to d as the indices c and m n z to the power n minus 1 z bar to the power m the corresponding equation for dou f by dou z bar is proved very similarly the only observation in that case is that dou z by dou z bar in that case is going to be equal to 0. So, in order to prove the second expression in this problem, you just have to focus on the fact that dou z by dou z bar this is equal to 0. Because we are looking at the, Wettinger, the second Wettinger derivative, one with respect to uh, z bar. And the fact that dou z bar okay so i'll just leave this as an exercise and check that dou z bar to the power m by dou z bar this is equal to m times z bar to the power m minus 1 the proof is exactly as in the case when uh, we deal with uh, the Wertinger derivative the, the derivative of z to the power m so before we do the next problem uh, let's also Look at the Laplacian operator in terms of the Wertinger derivatives. So recall again that the uh, Laplacian was Laplacian operator was given by dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square. Let us use the definition of uh, the Wettinger derivatives and write the, the derivatives in terms of uh, dou by dou z and dou by dou z bar. Let us see how, how this goes. This is just going to be equal to what is going to be. So, recall that dou f by dou z is equal to half of dou f by dou x plus i 1 by i times dou f by dou y and dou f by dou z bar was half of dou by dou x minus 1 by i times dou by dou y 
or dou by dou z bar. So dou by dou x in particular, let's see, dou by dou x, this is going to be equal to dou by dou z. So dou, for any function f, that's what I mean, it's given by delta. This is equal to dou of by dou z plus dou of by dou z bar. Check that this is exactly uh, what the Wettinger derivatives will give. This is half of dou of by dou x plus 1 by i times dou of by dou y. This is half of dou of by dou x minus 1 by i times dou f by dou y. And what will be dou of by dou y? This is going to be equal to dou f by dou z minus dou f by dou y and we have to be careful because this is going to be i times dou f by dou y. Okay, so let us now look at what is going to be dou square f by dou x square. That is just going to be equal to dou by dou x of whatever was there and dou by dou x of this is going to be equal to dou by dou z of dou f by dou z plus dou of by dou z bar plus dou by dou z bar of dou by dou f by dou z plus dou of by dou z bar. So this is going to be equal to dou square f by dou z square plus dou square f by dou z bar square and by using the uh, Clairaut's theorem this is going to be equal to dou square f by dou z z bar. Okay, let us now compute uh, dou, dou square f by dou y square in terms of the Wettinger derivatives. What will be dou square f by dou y square? We already have written down an expression for that. It is going to be 1 by i times dou by dou z of one by i times dou f by dou z minus dou f by dou z bar. And then there is a, a dou by dou z bar of 1 by i times dou f by dou z minus dou f by dou z bar. Okay, let us see what happens here. The, the i's will give us a minus 1 times dou square f by dou z square and uh, yeah I missed a bar here there should be a bar here and there is going to be a minus of dou square f or rather by dou z dou z bar there will be two, two of these by Clairaut's theorem and then there is a dou square f by dou z bar square. Therefore, hence the Laplacian of f is given by dou square f by dou x square plus dou square f by dou y square which will now become 4 times dou square f by dou z dou z bar. So, this is the <coughs> Laplacian in terms of our Wettinger derivatives. Let us now try to get hold of uh, a, a necessary and sufficient condition when we can say that a given polynomial is harmonic or not. So, recall that uh, in the, while doing the previous problem, oh yes, maybe I should mention that at this point. This problem tells us uh, exactly when uh, our polynomial is going to be holomorphic. Notice that if there is uh, any term with m greater than z to the uh, c n m not equal to 0 or m greater than 0, then the uh, derivative of uh, f with respect to z bar will not be 0 and hence the Cauchy Riemann equations will not be satisfied. So, the holomorphic polynomials are precisely those polynomials where c and m the coefficient c and m is 0 whenever m is uh, greater than 0. So, just like how we can give a characterization of what holomorphic polynomials will look like, we will also be able to talk about how harmonic polynomials will look like. So, let me just write down the problem for you. Again, let f be the polynomial f 
f of z equal to summation c n m z to the power n z bar to the power m. So, notice that both z and z bar feature in here. The polynomial f is harmonic on c if and only if c and m is equal to 0 whenever both n comma m are positive. The necessary and sufficient condition is that at least one of n and m should be 0. There cannot be polynomials of the type z to the power 2, z bar to the power 3. There will be either a polynomial, uh, either a monomial with z to the power n featuring in it or z bar to the power m featuring in it. All other terms should necessarily be equal to 0. Well, we have already done the hard work to prove this. So, the proof is now going to be quite straightforward. We are interested in the Laplacian of f. What will be the Laplacian of f? Laplacian of f is going to be equal to, yeah, let me just leave it to you to check that this is going to be c and m times the Laplacian of z to the power m, z bar to the power m. <laughs> let us look at the Laplacian of each of the monomials separately. So, the first question is what is going to be Laplacian of uh, z to the power n. Remember that Laplacian can now be written as 4 times dou by dou square by dou z dou z bar of z to the power n in this case which is equal to 4 times dou by dou z of dou z to the power n by dou z bar. And we have already seen that the Wettinger derivative of z to the power n with respect to z bar is 0. So, this is going to be equal to dou by dou z of 0 which is 0, 4 times dou by dou z of 0 which is 0. So, the Laplacian of z to the power n is 0. So, in particular the function z to the power n is harmonic that is what we have just established. Let us also now look at what is going to be the conjugate harmonic, uh, the conjugate uh, powers z bar to the power n. This is also going to be the same as the uh, second derivative dou square by dou z bar dou z. Let me write it this way now. By Clairaut's theorem, we can do that. And this is going to be 4 by dou z bar of dou z bar to the power m by dou z. And we have just uh, seen in the previous problem that this vanishes, just like how this vanishes. And this is equal to 0. So, z bar to the power m, they also uh, are harmonic. They all the, the Laplacian of such functions also vanish. So, in particular, if you get back to the expression here, whenever either m is equal to 0 or n is equal to 0, the Laplacian always vanishes. Okay, let us now look at what is going to be the Laplacian when there are powers of both z to the power n and z bar to the power m. This is the uh, expression which could create a problem. Let us see. This is going to be 4 times dou by dou z dou by dou z bar of z to the power n z bar to the power m which we have already seen is going to be 4 times dou by dou z of m minus 1 times z to the power n z bar to the power m. And uh, now applying the z derivative to the entire thing, this is going to be equal to 4 times n minus 1 into m minus 1 into z to the power n minus 1 z bar to the power m minus 1. So, effectively we have written the Laplacian of f to be equal to summation c n m 4 times n minus 1 into m minus 1 z to the power n minus 1 z bar to the power m minus 1 where both m comma n are now greater than 0 both are greater than 0 whenever uh, maybe I should have been a little careful when I wrote indices earlier I hope I have written greater than or equal to 0 earlier 
Yes, I have written a greater than or equal to 0 here. We do allow in those cases n and m to be 0. But in this case, if n is 0 or if m is 0, what happens is that the Laplacian is going to kill the function. What remains is hence both n comma m greater than 0, n plus m less than or equal to d. And this is precisely what the Laplacian of f is going to be. But this is a basis of uh, the collection of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to d and therefore c and m is forced to be 0 whenever such an uh, expression is demanded to be 0. The lambda, uh, the Laplacian of f is equal to 0 if and only if c and m is equal to 0 uh, for all n comma m greater than 0. Either n is greater than 0 or m is greater than 0, this is equal to 0. So, this is uh, one stroke we have the if and only if part and with that we com complete the proof. Let me conclude this problem session by solving one more problem. We will try to see uh, when an entire function can be real valued. Uh, entire uh, already captures the fact that the function is holomorphic on the entire complex plane. So, let f from c to c be an entire function. Then f is real valued that means it takes only values in, on the real line only if f is a is constant. So, the only possible real valued functions uh, are constants. Let us give a proof of this. The proof is embedded in the in in the Cauchy Riemann equations. Let us use the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus like we had done earlier to write uh, the real part. So, uh, the imaginary part of f is already known to be 0. So, let f be equal to u plus iv. f is real valued implies that v is equal to 0. We already now know that v is equal to 0. And what is going to be u? By the fundamental theorem of calculus, u of x plus i y is going to be equal to u of 0 plus integral from 0 to x u of t dt, that will give u of x minus u of 0 plus 0 to oh, dou u by dou x of t dt, the fundamental theorem of calculus captures it this way. And now next is the y derivative. So, the x is already there, it will be x plus i t dt. So, this is from 0 to y. So, this is precisely the expression of u by using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Remember that f is an entire function. Now, let us invoke the Cauchy Riemann equation like we have done earlier and this is going to be equal to u of 0. Dou u by dou x is dou v by dou y of t dt and this is 0 to x and this is 0 to y of ok. This now will be minus of dou v by dou x of x plus i t dt. But what do we know about v? We know that v is 0 because f is a real valued function. Because v is 0, its partial derivatives are also 0, both are 0. And that means that u of x plus iv or u of z is equal to u of 0 which is a constant. That is precisely what we had uh, come to prove because f is equal to u in this case and u is a constant function.